this week, the Vatican formally dismissed a homosexual Manhattan priest from his Jesuit order for publicly opposing the teachings of the church regarding homosexual activity. That priest is Father John McNeil. You are a prominent Jesuit uh, priest psychiatrist, and you're being expelled from your order uh, uh, and removed from priestly functions because of your refusal to end your ministry to gay people. You're Father John McNeil, and I'm pleased to say this is your second visit to our program, Father. The day of my ordination was a great moment because I knew God had something special in mind for me. And this man taught me through his writing that my experience was an authority greater than any external authority. Freeing people from interior rejection, shame, and guilt. Bringing them the message that God loved them precisely as they were. That was very reassuring to be part of this fraternity who could stand there wearing clothing like this with people like John McNeil, Bob Carter, Bernard Lynch. There we were on Fifth Avenue in New York City announcing to the world, hey, here we are, look at the banner, look at us. Everything about us is okay. Dignity, dignity, what a name for a group. No matter what you do, no matter what you tell us, we have dignity. Meeting John, someone who had put together his sexuality and his spirituality, in and of itself was light at the end of the tunnel. But to find someone with his spirit, with his joy, it was a call to the future. One of the important things that he did was help gays to, th to feel good about themselves and to see that they weren't uh, moral pariahs or theological pariahs, but that they were creatures of God, loved by God. And not only was it okay to be gay, but it was good to be gay. The book was a, a particularly important one to many countries. Here's, here's one that is in Spanish. And we have another one here that is in Italian. These were all new ideas. For Catholics to be talking about the idea that gay could be good, you could practice homosexuality in consonance with Christ's teachings and all these kinds, these were all new ideas. People have threatened, you know, his life for just daring to speak out. John was an honest gay man. And a lot of the men who led the church then are simply not honest gay men. 41 years ago, God led me to the St. Charles Bar and put Charles into my life. There was a warmth and a, you know, sharing of ideas and values that we both had. It was amazing to be doing that on the first night. The tradition we come out of is about love. It's about the friendship and my beloved. John's commitment to Charlie is obviously the love of two companions, friends, lovers, family. This is good and holy. Eventually I sat down and I read the book and uh, there was no doubt in my mind that what he was advocating was clearly contrary to what the church formally teaches. Rome issued an order forbidding me to speak publicly on the issue of homosexuality. The Vatican, citing confusion among Catholics over church teaching on homosexuality, released a letter that strongly condemned homosexual activity and homosexual rights groups. Ratzinger issues this letter. The famous Halloween letter. It was a letter from the highest authorities in the church to all the bishops in the world. I couldn't believe it. People were, in 1986, were already rubbed raw by the AIDS crisis. It was a horrible time. People were dropping like flies. Homosexual Catholics in New York protesting the eviction of their organization, Dignity, from St. Francis Xavier Church by the New York Archdiocese. When people needed God most, this is what they got. Every day I was tormented. Am I being silent out of obedience to an order? I had to say no to that order. The provincial telephoned me and came to my office and read me a letter in Latin. I was no longer to be considered a member of the Jesuit order. It was a very painful moment. Even when I think about the work that the rest of us have done, we wouldn't have done it if John had not done the work that he did. 
And to see the price John's paid, I mean, it's unspeakable. Blessed are we who gather in God's name. Blessed are we who gather in God's name. Amen. Amen. Harvey Milk said coming out was the most uh, politically important thing one could ever do. There is nothing so powerful as one person living a life of integrity. That's exactly what John McNeil has done. That's what Harvey Milk did. And that is what is changing the world.